Thanks for the round of applause. So uh, I'm talking about the wisdom of the birded gurus. Uh, thanks our company team for, for having me, and thanks to uh, all the crazy sponsors that make all this, these conferences possible, especially in the Ruby world, which is one of the most conferency well, that I know of anyway. So welcome to the wisdom of the birded gurus. Um, here's me at 10. You know, I was young, foolish, and frankly, I was a bit underwater, you know, lots of things you don't understand, really. And one of the things that got me wondering was uh, culture, films, comics. What's ancient is good. You know, you go to a space opera or whatever, oh, we found a spaceship from million, y million years ago, so it's, it's better than one we ones we have today. What? Or, uh, hey, look at it, this is an ancient technique in martial arts, which is better than everything we have today. So I say, okay, but if it's so obviously overpowered, what, why aren't everybody, isn't everybody using it today? Um, you know, we have a better technique, so everyone should use it right now, because it's better. Um, okay, I don't know why it's not used. Unless, of course, it's secret. You have ancient secret powers, so only the guys who know it can, can use them. And that's really good. So, well, okay. The world is not optimized, but it's because it's ancient and secret. By the way, how many of you did notice the game and know the game? Okay, just a few. Um, well, you will know that in that young age, I have some idols, um, and that can slow you down and weigh you up. So I tried to uh, change a bit, so here's me at around 20. Uh, it looks like I'm, I'm in pain. Uh, why am I in pain? Be because I'm in an association with a lot of friends, we're doing stuff, and it seems we'll never learn. You know, people will do the mistakes over and over again, and I, I was just wondering that we know the problems, we know how to optimize, we know how to fix it, so why don't people learn? Well, just because it's hard, you know. We also have an excuse is that if, if the, the knowledge to do better is secret, well, it's not your fault, you don't know, so you have excuse, but I don't like excuses. Um, I like to... F or if the knowledge to beat people is secret, to be better at one's craft is secret, well, I'd like to find that secret so I can be one of the superheroes. So I started looking, and the problem is I was 20 and so, and just felt like a kid, you know, you're afraid of the big guys, you come into the bar, they all know what they're doing, they're chatting between each other, and, well, you're not exactly welcome. That's until you ask. So how could you stand proud when you only have a pack of mental sweets in your inventory? Um, I'm very lucky because I'm someone who was arrogant at that time. So, you know, you're young, you knew everything. Now I, I'm old enough to know that I don't know shit about it, anything. And I know I don't, but, you know, What's, what, what could you, how could you balance this just by trying people and bluffing into thinking you do? And then I understood that's why the big guys were so frightening in the bar and, and whatever. So because they wanted to look good, so they used impressing stuff, and then so I'm, I feel lost. But if I talk bullshit, nobody un understands me again, and well, I'm, I'm one of the big guys, and I can impress all the youngest guys, but... That's not really the point either. So luckily, for me, I find a crew, and uh, the Ruby crew is really an awesome crew. You know, you do some Ruby, people are really welcoming. You do some Rails, that's awesome. Uh, this is Rails Girls Paris, which is going to be in two weeks next to .rb, and people from Paris RB are, are really cool. Um, nice meetup every month. And of course, in my company, because if you, if you live with super nice people, your life is really better than if you live with bad people. So, now you know me. You know where, why I'm standing here and where I'm coming from. So, we're going, let's unearthing some old geeky's bones. Um, the problem is, when you want to start the wis to, to learn the wisdom of the old birded gurus, is that you're lost. You're just lost, you don't know where to go. And the path is, looks really difficult, you know, you, you need some walk through or whatever. So um, go to internet, Twitter, find quotes, and I find one funny. Like, hey, 
it's fun to see the JS community or not JS community being rock hard each time they we discovered all things. You know, like JS guys say, hey, JS is actually an object oriented language. Yeah, okay. Co coming from C at school. Yeah, that's not big news. Yeah, haha, <laughs> they're young, no. they're poor guys. Now they're discovering that JS is a functional language too. And coming from Ruby, say, hey, we know too how about how it's about to have uh, an imperative and an object and functional language at the same time. So, yeah, Ruby on Rails is not the cool kid anymore. That's why they, put, they made discourse in it. They say, yeah, when it was the cool kid, you were aware of it. You, f you say, okay, not trust these guys. And now Node.js is the new cool kid. So bashing JS guys is fun. But it won't take you very, well, very far. And if you want to bash JS guys, you have to know that other people, other people, less fancy people, well, let's just bash Ruby too, saying like, ORM is just the Vietnam of computer science. Or saying that, hey, imperative programming, object-oriented programming, active record-oriented programming? What the fuck? When did it go wrong? And so on, so on, so on. So at least this, this quote comes from the U Ruby community, so it shows we have some healthy sense of self-derision. And at least we want to correct ourselves. So how do we do it? Well, I have an advice from David Parnas. I don't think many people know him, but you might, you might know Alan Perlis. If you don't know Alan Perlis, what you find about him on, on, on the internet is just quotes. Quotes and very funny quotes like his 10 laws or whatever. And well, he's the thesis advisory for David Parnas. And these guys say, I'd advise students to pay more and more attention to the fundamental ideas rather than the latest technology. For the technology will be out of date quickly and out of date before even the grade rate. And the fundamental ideas never get out of date. Which is why I think today in Ruby community we see a lot of talks and we see a lot of stuff and documents and tips passed on that are on the human stuff. Many, many of the talks I've seen in, in, in our camp are really inspirational, are not really dealing with the problems of technology, but with the problem of humans using the technology, or humans that you use the technology for. So uh, yeah, tech changes every 10 years or so. Now it's rather like every two years, all the uh, all landscape has changed. But you know, humans evolved in, evolved in millennia, so I don't think that human skills are going anytime soon, and that's for the better. I think the Ruby community has matured over the to these topics. You know, we were all young and foolish too, and now we're a bit mature and looking for, well, we're coming from somewhere, look behind us and see what old guys come before us. I'm not losing you, right? Even with my French accent? Okay, thanks. So if you have some crazy secret knowledge, what should you look for? You can look it for it in books, you can look for it in universities, which in French is quite a debate, because we laugh easily laugh at people in universities, and you can look at communication of the ACM, which is a really nice magazine and paper and website on, on uh, science and computer scientists, real ones. I also like conferences like SIGGRAPH, you know, it's just people making crazy papers, crazy algorithms on, on computer vision either displaying or, or, or visualizing. So it's not really web stuff, but for me, that fuels me with faith and passion, you know? Think, oh wow, so with just one camera, we can transform this photo in a 2 and 3D object. That's, I, won't, I won't ever do this at my work, but I find that amazing. So you got looking for, for what? You're looking for knowledge, for scientific papers, and you see stuff like this. And it's uh, pretty scary, right? Okay, so this is not even one paper. This is actually two papers, two very different papers. One in on the web stuff, like script LS attacks. And the other is on Lamport's Paxos. It's, it's a consensus algorithm. So if you do a lot of distributed computing, you have a lot of computers and databases or whatever having, the, having information that keeps going outdated and they want to correct this. 
So like uh, you have you have a Mongo slave server, whatever, and they have to reach a consensus somehow. And Leslie Lamport, who is uh, who's been in uh, computer science for a long time, devised an algorithm to uh, reach consensus better with some qualities and some defects, and he explains all of this in the paper. So two really different papers: scriptlet stacks, pirate stuff, and uh, Lamport's Paxos consensus algorithm. No, diff no big difference between the two, except that the Lamport's paper has at least more pictures in it and nice colors. So maybe you want to start with this one. But luckily, you can extract some stuff. You know, it looks like a crazy technical jargon, like, like a robot speaking. So you try to have a friendly robot translator, right? Like a robot and pirate, too. So we call R2T2. And... Uh, he tells us that it's all the same. You have a title, you have a team and university, you have some keywords, and uh, starts with an abstract, follows with an introduction, all the papers, you know, like 10 pages, often, sometimes 20. And someone, somehow in the end of the paper, you found an alleged, related works, a conclusion, and references. So if you know anything about fast, re fast reading, you know, it just you don't have necessarily the time to read all the 20 pages to reach for the conclusion. So most tips when you have this kind of papers, it just fast read. You read the tags. Will this be uh, applicable to, to domains I know and I want to know about? You read the abstract saying like, oh, we want to attack your computer with not using JavaScript. So you felt safe when you, when you deactivated JavaScript. And now this research, pa research paper tells you that you're not. So, OK, you piqued my, my interest. I'm going to look at what you're going to say. And then you skip all the paper right to the conclusion to get a second introduction to what the, the man wanted to say. say. So you see tags, title, uh, introduction, conclusion. And if, if you're interested, you can skip paragraph, look at the titles, and subtitles and see if the paper interests you. Luckily, we can find the, the, luckily the, the science and the research came to the internet too, so it's a bit different. So if you see, go to the communications of the ACM homepage, you see almost the same stuff. You find an interesting paper like uh, Data Representation Synthesis, so that's the title. You also find the team, and you have some abstract, even if the, the text I is for premium users only. And if you look for the rest, like keywords, related works, they just become useful, useful tags to, to have in a, in a search engine. So that's, that's a nice way to, to discover articles. Some of them are free. You can go to their, their homepage and just bath inside. And if you're curious, you will learn a lot of things. And uh, if, you find, if you happen to, find, uh, to follow on this thesis, as a thesis paper for a PhD, well, this one is very well known by us. Like it's Roy Feldin's thesis on REST stuff. And um, well, you have the title, you have the team, you have an, an allegements here, introduction links, conclusion and reference at, at the end, along with the keywords and abstract. So that's, that's useful too. So why should you read these papers? Obviously, it takes time, it's interesting. This one is a perfect example. You know, you do Rails in like what, in 2010, and people are still re rediscovering REST, saying, hey, this guy wrote a thesis 10 years ago. He's telling us what we should do with HTTP verbs and so on, how we do our APIs, how we should respond to requests and whatever. And when you try to implement all this, what happens is, Roy Fielding is just telling you that the guys who thought HTTP 10 years back, so that's 20 years from, uh, 20 years from now, they already planned for all these verbs to exist. And this is when you get angry at all the browsers implementers, because obviously most of them only have post and get and uh, patch, put, whatever, were a bit forgotten, which is why Rails had to hack on it. So here's my proposal. 
What should we do? We should all go look for research papers. We should all go read theses. We should all go back to all this crazy stuff, old stuff, and boring stuff to discover some, some nuggets, you know, to change your vision of the world, to do something different. Because it's so easy when you're a newcomer to just find on the trendy stuff on Twitter and so on. Well, 140 characters is not going to give you a full analysis, right? So if you want to do something differently from the rest of the world, it's a good idea to look at the rest of the stuff. And if you are, if you are in a community which is as fun and welcoming and, and, and knowledge exchanging as Ruby, maybe you should also try to include in your works uh, less known papers, so you can bring them back if, if they're interesting. And what happens when, uh, when some pirate fam find nuggets? He won't share them, but I'm actually engaging you to do so. So you, think you find nuggets, you meet, you drink, you talk, sometimes you fight, because you know, people are not going to be okay with what, what you are saying, right? Either they don't know what you know by reading the paper, either they have done a huge code base which you are uh, completely overthrowing with your new ideas. But there's some fight, and I think it's in this kind of fights, if it stay healthy, that you can learn a bit more, like everyone makes other people learn. So once, once you find some, some allies, people who agree with you, you form parties, and you say, okay, we'll try to publicize this, we'll try to, I don't know, write, write a gem, write blog posts saying why REST is better than, than the rest. What? Sorry. <laughs> and, um, and try to say, well, I found this. I found this of some interest, and we were doing things wrong. So instead of just fighting on your own, you find parties, and you set sail, you do the gems, you do the blog posts, you do whatever. It's advantage time. Yeah. And the next problem is after fighting so much, well, you become mainstream, you know, like, you're not fighting the pirates that are the new young guys that bring new ideas. So I know that's not a position that most will enjoy, but try to find a balance with all this and keep going in, into research, into conferences, into the wisdom of the bird goose, read papers from the 70s. Um, if some of you do some management or, or want to talk to your project manager or client or whatever, it's always a good idea to take a, not, not a very old good book from Fred Brooks, like in the 70s, like the mythical man month, and so uh, saying a bits of wisdom from, from this book. Okay. Do you have questions? I went too fast. I'm really sorry. I, I got so excited. I, yeah. Do you have any way of, like, um, you know, when you search the ACM, uh, do you have actually membership? Because it's, uh, or do you just look for the free version of the papers, uh, for things that interest you? I don't have the membership personally, but what you can do is uh, uh, either you, well, the point, actually, what I could, what I could, should have proposed is you, we, we all find research papers, like post them on Twitter with a hashtag like Ruby Research or whatever, so the people who get uh, the prime content could share with people. Um, also, the ACM has, has paid membership, but uh, most most scientists want to get the, out the word. You know, it's it's uh, we hackers are getting recognition and jobs because we produce things and code and working applications. Uh, scientists are, are getting recognition and jobs because they publish things. So if, even if it's uh, premium content on ACM, you, you, sh you can probably find somehow uh, papers, either the same paper or related papers uh, on this. Oh, wh what you can do uh, is you take a paper, if you see one in full, you get all the related works, you get all the references, or you can just look by author. And the same author will often, especially right now, will often have a blog in which uh, his own research is explained in more layman terms. So this is what I do. ACM is a very nice point to start. All books also are a nice point to start. And you know, I, I really had to force myself not to turn this talk into a just Edgar Dextra is awesome, you know. 
Uh, I really recommend the, the Twitter account like Dijkstra Quotes. So that's D I J K S T A R A quotes. And uh, they find papers, they find quotes, and they, they say in some like one once a day, and uh, it's really funny. Any other question? Yeah, uh, it's not really a question, but I would that, um, like your opinion or start a discussion. It, it's this concept with it in, that exists in music, which is there's never something new. Yeah. Uh, like even the first thing was not new. Um, meaning that everything is a remix of the previous. Like in IT, one of the things that we continuously have in any field in IT is like thin client or not, right? Um, it continuously shifts around. So the televisions, they are now becoming smart. They used to be extremely thin clients. It's going to change somewhat in the future again, probably. Um, and even you, you could go and say, like, even the rest in itself was just a remix. Like, how can we make method calls over the internet to yeah. uh, another machine? So, this idea of gurus or something, it can't. Re uh, if you believe that everything is a remix, there is no really good. There is not the one genius before that you rediscover. It's just we're continuously playing with the same things and just change accents over time. No? Yeah, I, I totally, I totally agree with you. At uh, it's it's part of the stuff I would I would have liked to put in my talk and and couldn't because of the, of the I feel I would lack time. And thank you for bringing this. So the idea is basically that nothing new exists. And uh, what I liked in the birded gurus is that uh, before we had computers and so and such easily we have a computer at hand that uh, that's that you can uh, actually lift and and carry with you or whatever. Um, the gurus from the 70s, they were not computer scientists because computer science didn't exist. So they were rather like linguists, mathematicians and whatever, and they liked to prove stuff. And that's, that's part of things that I liked uh, in, in this period because if you see people today, they just hack stuff, they do stuff and, and they publish it, or they just use like their own opinions uh, and these gurus, they did the same things, but it was in their culture and the science culture that they just wanted to prove what, what they wanted to do. Like the Lisp machine was, was discovered, and uh, when, when, they, when someone theori theorized the Lisp machine, it didn't exist, and it didn't exist for like five or ten years. You know? So yeah, it's, it's always, always the same concepts, but Today we'd say benchmark and prove your stuff, but at this time it was like math mathematically prove your stuff. So uh, when, when I saw the young guys and in Paris RB saying, hey, I want to talk about Mongo, Mongo is great, Mongo has this, this and that, and uh, later, a few months later, I see them crying about stuff they didn't have, they say, yeah, we have the, we have the, um, the what, CAP, CAP theorem. That's, that's not news, that's like, from the 80s or the 70s. So you will get uh, uh, one more thing that you didn't got with PostgreSQL or MySQL, but you also lose one thing. So that's one of the key starting points for me for, for that talk. And uh, luckily today we have enough knowledge to dive into other base, knowledge base to, to mix all this. And so you can have two of the CAP theorem and still hack to get some of benefits of the third. So. Anyone has more questions or remarks? Well, thanks for opening the debate. I hope this will continue. And um, if you don't have more questions, I'm just saying you to have fun, and uh, I can have a little game if you want. So, bird or nerd? It's a game of beards, and uh, the rules are simple. Uh, you should guess the guru levels based on bird level. So I'm happy to, because in this room we have uh, a lot of uh, shaven people, but we also have a lot of birded people. I think you win. And you're, you're a close second. I don't, I don't know the bird by the rest. So uh, you should guess the guru levels, but uh, beware because there are some traps. So do uh, you know this guy? Alan Cox, is he a guru? Yeah, 
hidden Linux kernel. So it's highly wizardry. And uh, do you know these guys? R raise your hand if you think they're gurus. And uh, yeah, OK, half the room. Yeah, so that's, that's Dennis Ritchie and Ken Tonson. So they, they done the language B, Unix, and Plan 9. Well, if someone has used Plan 9 in this room, well, really? Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, that's huge ideas for an OS. Gurus or not gurus? One, just one. Wow. Well, I know he has no bird, but you know, I told you there are traps. He's on K for the. What? <laughs> Small talk. This one. Two, three, four, five. Five people for five, six? He's Robert Tarjan. He's one of my favorite guys from school because he's, all, he's done all the stuff in graph theory. Let's get on. Okay, this one. Only? Oh, wow. It's Ed Edgar Dijkstra. It's this guy is the most awesome computer scientist on the planet. Do you know this one? It's a trick. Yeah? Just one for a guru. It's Captain Crunch. He was the guy who, uh, when you had to pay for the, from the internet and pay for servers, he would just uh, take his phone and shake a Captain Crunch serial box because it would be the same frequencies that would open free access. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if, it's, if, if the guy is a guru, but I like what he's done. OK, one more. Yeah? You know Lisp? Well, I hit the guy for, uh, for Lisp. He's McCarthy. OK, trick you again. You think he's a guru? Well, he tried to become a guru, so he grew bad. No. This one? Guru or not guru? Well, this is a reverse process. He had some kind of stubble, and uh, he shaved it. That's too bad, because he's John Carmack, and he's just awesome. This one? Uh, just a, more, a, few, a few more people. That's, that's Don Knuth. That was a real trap because I, I didn't find any photo where he has a bird. But um, he, he's the guy who wrote um, Art of Computer Programming. And uh, maybe you've seen that story that someone went to church, a young guy, developer, he, he goes to church, and he meets Don Knuth. And he say, oh, you're Don Knuth. I have all of your books. And Knuth replies, yes, everybody has my, have all of my books, but they never read it. That's too bad. OK, another. Bird or no bird? Well, I guess she has no bird, but she kicks ass. Ada Lovelace. This one? Grace Harper. Grace Harper, awesome. She invented a lot of stuff. And I'm just reminding that I forgot to put Hedy Lamar, which was a Hollywood actress, but invented like Wi Fi. Watch her lectures on YouTube. They're totally Grace Harper? Yes. She has a few lectures uh, when she lived on uh, YouTube, where she is answering questions and also having a few thoughts. Watch her there as we go. Okay. So uh, just walk, gr watch Grace Harper talks on YouTube. I, didn't, I knew they were awesome, but I didn't know they. They were on YouTube. Um, she, she's also bringing like a um, wire to, to most of their talks. And uh, the wire represents what a milli or na nanosecond is um, by saying, you see this wire? It's the distance the light uh, goes in such amount of time. OK, gurus or not gurus? Debate is open. <laughs> I guess this one will be very fierce. So uh, one of these kept his bird, so, and one of these shaved his bird. So I'm not sure. OK, so out of the t these two guys, who is the guru? One, two, or both? This one? OK, this other? Not a guru. Oh, I'm so glad to see that people prefer Stallman over Bill Joy. This also means that you all prefer Emacs to Vim. Which I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. 
I tricked you. Okay. More geeky rivalry. Uh, I see someone has an opinion. Okay, no problem. No bird. <laughs> gurus? Not gurus. And how, did, how about these guys? <laughs> No, that's just that's the end of the game. I know I have plenty of other people to boot. Um, I have some win men that just don't want it to make all the fuss about uh, the numbers and whatever. So uh, I, I think we can just thank uh, Joran and, uh, and our captain. And that's the end for me. Thank you.